Eli Hanneman so prepared for this moment, taking advantage of this replacement spot to compete here at the Jeep Surf Ranch Pro presented by Adobe. He's a low seed in his heat bracket with Felipe Toledo, the highest scoring surfer on the right in Surf Ranch history. Who's in his six man heat. Here comes Eli already through a few solid turns. On his opening wave here pulls nice and tight into the pit there. Nice flow and rhythm for the grommet in the draw. Hard off the bottom. Nice little layback check right in the pocket. Going really deep in the flats on those bottom turns. I know he's throwing a lot of big punts towards the end of this ride. That one, he went for a big hack right when that thing was hollowing out. And that'll cost him that inside pit and a big finish. So he'll at least have a, a, an idea of what he wants to improve on on his second ride later on today. Yeah, Eli, like you mentioned, the young gun in the in the draw gets the call up. And the honesty from the rookies and the injury replacements about the sharp learning curve that you have to take here. You can see Eli is kind of pacing himself, learning this wave as he goes. Just such a great talent. I remember him actually catting for Malia Manuel in Maui at uh, Honolulu Bay, and that was the first time I'd ever heard of him. I think he was 11 years old back then, and he's such an amazing talent. Welcome back to the Jeep Surf Ranch Pro presented by Adobe and let the Hanneman show begin. We've got a surf savant now trying his hand at this left first wave. Just a 393, so room to grow here and room to throw. We know how good this kid is in the air. Chris Cote here with Pete Mel. Hopefully, we're gonna be jumping out of our seats here any second, Pete. I hope so too. You know, we expect it from Eli. You look at some of the edits he's been putting out lately. He has matured in a big way, filled out much stronger than uh, the young little guy. And the young little guy used to get really barreled and showcase a high amount of power. And now a little extra weight, he can really start to showcase that. Doing huge fade, nice little soulful carve. Goes to the drop me backside tube, comes out clean. And almost nails the whip. I like that. That was I, such a cool The transition into the, into the tube, the way he just kind of like shuffled up, um, it, that's a, a an entry into the barrel, a unique entry. entry into the barrel. Entry is a huge word you don't hear often because getting barreled in the ocean is pretty rare. I mean, no matter where you live, even at Pipeline, getting barreled is pretty rare. But getting barreled here is a hourly, minutely occurrence. So you got to do it creatively if you want to stand out. Good flow on the outside. You know, nothing super dangerous or dynamic, but nice upside down clack of the lip there. But I did definitely like the unique style of his entry into that end section barrel. It's too bad that he wasn't able to pull off the air too. Nice transition and combination of moves there. The eyes, that backhand, trying to get release. I mean, there's the difference, right? It's uh, We've seen a lot of the surfers put that tail up above the lip, showcasing the three fins. He's got uh, one of the best seats in the house. You know, not only does he get to see the waves coming at him, but when they're going away from him, you can kind of get a gauge of spray going up and down. They get excited when that track goes, starts Definitely. running. Right? Well, it's a little they're breeze, right? All right, Liam O'Brien. First heard this guy's name when he got a runner-up finish out of nowhere at the Vans US Open of surfing, a huge result. And that put him on the global stage and he has grabbed the reins and held them. Had an incredible run at the opening leg in Australia. Oh, almost, almost said, looks real comfortable in the two, but you saw right there, even just the slightest, slightest little error, he will get caught. Yeah, he had the adjustment happening. It looked like he was gonna be able to pull it out. You know, it starts to hit your shoulder and drink, drag you down, but he was able to adjust, but then went too high. The, the, the falls here seem to take so long. No, 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 I'm falling, I'm still falling. I can't believe I'm still falling. And then he just vanish. See the outside section, getting his warm up on. Three nice turns, and then the setup for the barrel here. This is where, unfortunately, this wave, you can see, it didn't quite barrel until a little later down the line. Then it got nice and round. But that's where you start to see the jersey hit the shoulder right there. Oh, come on, he pulls it out somehow. 
Almost made it. He did, but then just too high, too forward on the board, straight in the lip. So what would you prescribe to have a better, cleaner entry into the tube with enough speed to get out of the tube? What kind of setup are you looking for? Well, I mean, I think the most dynamic setup we've had is actually those ones where you're doing a turn a little late and you're actually falling into the barrel and you're deep with less speed. That's how you're going to get that depth. It's very dangerous to do, though, right? It's not something where you can eye it, set it up, wait for it. I think he felt like, for me at least, he waited a little too long for that barrel section. He could have maybe fit in another turn and then get in there. But you don't really know when it's going to get into that hollower section because it's so perfect looking that you think it's just going to barrel the whole time. It's, yeah, you, you have an idea. And, but but it within varies. a span of three feet, it's a long area here at Surf Ranch. And the wave is going faster than most waves on the planet. And that was one take. So props to Strider for that. That was... Uh, it, that never gets old. That's really cool to see. We're all, we're all really happy to have Strider back in the water. He brings the energy, and now it's up to Liam O'Brien to bring the energy. I love the looseness, the whippy style this surfer has. Oh, gosh. He, Heart he, in the throat. It's pretty, you can tell he's nervous, and that's fine. We would all be nervous riding this wave. He's going to kick it into that next gear. I like that turn. A little switchblade. Another one straight up into the power section. Oh. It all started unwinding. Like a thread coming off a sweater, but in fast motion. Yeah, that's, I mean, I feel like it's just uh, not a, enough experience at the wave, right? I feel like his surfing fits here. But it's just he needs a bit more reps. You I mean, can see that he, he's got the start. There was a, the two-turn combo here is great, but it's so straight up that it makes him miss time. You know, right here, he, straight up that was a nice turn again the second one straight up but then it makes you just that tinge far behind he even actually adjusts and puts himself deeper which is good but i think uh you know trying to force you cannot force turns on this way because yeah. it's so fast and there's a lot of power packed into a pretty small area so if you try to force something, the wave more often than not will blow right by you. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So Liam now is putting himself in a tough situation, being having to perform on his next run. Solely, both right and left have to be good. And then, like you said, just kind of off everybody's radar. Stayed at home in Brazil for a few years. And then when he made that decision, didn't look like it was too hard. Didn't look like it took him that long to get on the championship tour. No, and, and now he's here to stay, and he's learning. You know, once you get to this championship tour, there's a whole other set of learning skills you need. How to beat certain surfers, how to surf a wave basin, how to surf pipeline in Tahiti. <laughs> nice casual paddle in. Here we go. There he does have shades of Adriana de Souza. See that uh, power base the fundamentals are there. Long setup for the two. Nice and deep, clean read. Watch the front arm guiding him through. Back arm is using, there's a handbrake right there. Nicely ridden tube there. So far so good, but anything can happen. So true, you know, and again, oh, right like that. See? Somehow pulled it out. And this end section, oh, so important for the timing and the barrel. And what is he gonna bring us? Just nicely done there. That setup to Strategic. barrel. I mean, all day long I'll watch that. Nice snap straight into the tube. And that particular barrel section looked, it always looks dreamy, but for some reason that one just had a really beautiful look to it. And, and you you'd mentioned the early setup on the outside section. So an adjustment made at the end of the wave to have a much cleaner transition into the barrel section. Nicely done for Pedersen to make an adjustment even on this wave. As you see, this one here, you're like, okay, two turns, and then he's like, okay, the barrel's gonna happen here. He sets it up a little bit early. Maybe could have had another maneuver done, but then he's deep for it. We still saw the nose of his board pretty much the whole time. So not a super deep barrel, but technical and long. He put in, he put in some time back there. And then these turns, you're always anticipating, Strider mentioned it before, you're anticipating that barrel section coming and when is it coming and you don't want to, you want to make the turn into the barrel. He did a good job there by making that transition work very well.
You want action? You got it. This is the Jeep Surf Ranch Pro presented by Adobe. You're watching Peterson Chris Santo. This is his second wave here of his first run. Decent score to start for Pedersen, a 5.40. See if he can uh, get himself up into the 7-8 range to keep the pace. And speaking of keeping the pace. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Guy, once you're there, I don't think you're it. getting back. That's not it. It happens. We've already seen it happen to, what, three or four of our competitors. These ankle biters are like great whites. They grab right. your ankle and just pull you back. <laughs> it's a bunch of great whites. Oh, yeah. Just nibbling at your heels, huh? Yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. You know, and this wave didn't have the size on the outside section, so you almost have to understand you got to be patient and wait for it. It starts to build here, and that's when he starts to go to work. But then, just that little bit behind, that little foamy section that came down, and then it clip, 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 clip. They're just eating your heels. Never, Never going to get there. Back half, to that open face. With half a foot out of position. I mean, it really is a matter of inches. But for Peterson there, you know, you never want to fall on one of these 45 second rides, but especially after only doing two turns to go down that early, that's going to hurt. Yeah, and he had that mid-range five, like a 5.4 for his right. This one's going to be a throwaway score. Leonardo Ferravanti is a surfer who has been grinding. Competed in the Australian leg, competed in El Salvador as part of the ISA World Surfing Games. He's back here in the pool. He has got one of the biggest years of his life. Well, you can see there's some strapping on the ankle from the injury that he's had for a while now. So he's surfing with uh, a bit of pain, most likely. Let's see what he can do. He's gonna start off. He goes down the line. Love Leo's style. It's super smooth, nice and clean, snappy, powerful, fast. Looking real electric here. Let's go down to the Shiseido jet ski view with Strider Wasilewski. Well, wow, looking electric in the barrel. I mean, these things are just reeling off. Look at that barrel. Oh, comes out, little head wash there. Straight back up into the lip. Body movement, looking on point. Nice spins out the back right there, release. Little change up on the face, straight back up into the lip. Another beautiful car that oh. goes over the handlebars. The smallest adjustments right there. What happened, bro? What and happened you go to him? down, caught the outside rail, toes were in. Little tiny mistakes here are huge ones on this platform. And it doesn't matter who you are, when you see one of those rights go off, peeling down the line, a perfect cylindrical aqua blue barrel. Ooh, it stings a little bit. You gotta imagine that stings a lot a bit for Leonardo Fieravanti. Yeah, see that compressed bottom turn? He's been able to, my first actual visit here was shared with Leo Fieravanti in his practice sessions. And uh, he surfed amazing um, throughout that period of time. And so he's been able to get a few reps out here. As you can see with that outside section, it just came down to pushing a little bit too hard on this inside portion. You know, he's been able to watch everybody today, knowing what he's going to have to go out there and perform to get those scores needed. He was doing it. He was on his way. And then there, just a little bit eye off the ball, probably looking a little bit down the line before he's completed that maneuver out. What's solid about Leo, too, is that he's going to have... Uh, just as good a chance to get a high number on the left. His backhand's very solid. And uh, always a surfer who shows up, gives his all, puts everything he has into the heat. He's, there's been uh, some, some cool social media posts of those two surfers as little kids competing against each other. So definitely a history between them. Leonardo Fieravanti right now trying to recover from a slip up on his previous effort just a 5-2-0 decent score but we're looking for sevens and eights to really fill out this leaderboard we know leo's got it in him time and place here we go Ooh. nicely done there love Ooh, to on. see the tail flying out just trying to recover get himself back into the zone he's back I like it when surfers put it on the edge and almost fall and recover and get themselves back into the action as Leo here is just tagging this lift. Oh, sick in the barrel. Great entry. Oh. Didn't get the exit. That little lift of the rail just to pull all the way through, but I love the way he was able to connect with the lift and get in underneath it. That's the type that's how you get deep. And he was deep, but just a little too deep. He's a little frustrated there after those two waves. And they were going to be good scores. They were going to be solid scores if they're the completion. And, 
you know, we've seen the judges, they they want you to complete it if you're going to see it go into those sixes and, and up above that. So, well, as surf fans like us and, and competitive surf fans, you watch this and you start to see the points. Okay, like, oh, it's a four. Now it's a five. It's a six. Do the surfers feel that same thing? After five turns and one tube ride, they're going, oh my gosh, this is going to be a great score. And then they fall. <laughs> Do they, do they, are they competing I would say down the that line? It's, yeah, I, I would say that you have to, right? You understand it. You know, if you have to push more or, you know, maybe you can conserve a little bit of the energy. You know, you, you do. And the best surfers in the world know how to read it and know when to push a little bit and know when to pace things. I think if Strider can commentate away from beginning to end and from inside the barrel, these surfers have the ability to score themselves in their head as they yeah. get on the line. Yeah, I mean, and... and and maybe there's something to be said about not doing that too, right? Trying to not fill the, the, the brain eyes, with too right? much, yeah, <laughs> with not too much information going on. Stay in the moment. The moment <laughs> yeah. is. Well, that's a life purpose, right? To stay in the moment as much as you can. But hey, you know, you're anticipating things. You're thinking about scores. It's a balance. So it's impossible. I mean, it has to be impossible not to. If you if you've done three hammers out the back, you're thinking, oh yeah, this is going to be good. <laughs> Kanoa has said it before many times. He thrives under pressure. Right now, he's in the lead. He's feeling good. Somebody starts putting pressure on Kanoa, he's going to perform that much more. We still have a lot of the field to go, too, so uh, stay tuned. Federico Mariah, super powerful. Big guy, too, so we'll see how... Uh, oh, I like he's just standing there, very relaxed as this wave's coming. Not showing any nerves. The owls have to be excited now because they're <laughs> about to get sprayed. Nobody <laughs> throws spray like Federico Mariah, as you can see right there. Thank you, proving my point. Three times in a row already. Bam, another big one. How's the Rico. Clean entry. Disappeared. Yeah, not dramatic, but nicely done. Now let's see some big on edge surfing. Yeah, his forehand has always been very solid. It's showcased in Hawaii. It's showcased all over the globe, J-Bay. You expect him to put a big number up here on the forehand. I like that he has the ability to extend and contract so quickly. You know, slinky style. Really lay it out there like that, but then get it all right back into a tight and ball. And that's the utilization as a tall guy to, to an advantage, right? Especially in the tight spaces like that, you have to be able to do that. And you have to do it strong, quick. Uh, you have to have the perfect timing when you do it. I wouldn't know anything about it, but I can really appreciate it. <laughs> I know it's got to be difficult. So for a guy, you know, for some of the taller guys, Owen Wright, Federico, are they, do you think they're thinking about the barrel? Like, okay, I don't need, I got to, I got to really rely on open ocean, open face power. I think, well, I, I would say that every, it all? yeah, well, and every surfer is a little different, right? What their strengths are absolutely going to be, you know, and you got to play to those strengths, especially in a wave that's this long. You know, I think that the forehand snap for Federico is one of the best in the world. And so you got to showcase that. But you also kind of have to show a bunch of variety, too. So doing it in different ways, different approaches. You know, the barrel is critical, but if you have to be, you have to be super deep. You know, it's part of the wave. And that was a very solid right-hand number he's going to get yeah, that was for his first run. Meat and potatoes all day long. Get, a, get yourself a seven. In there. Yeah, get yourself get a get seven. Some greens. You're free to rip. <laughs> Have you seen a variety of where the surfers are taking off? Are some using different pole lengths? I know yeah. you t mentioned 72 and 70. Yeah. yeah, well, there's, you know, 69 is kind of the, the green flag where, where a lot of, like, your average surfers would take off at. But these guys have moved in to, you know, two and three and four poles away from that. It's the same thing on the right. You know, they're, they're almost eight to ten poles up on the right, where it allows you to get a lot more motion into the wave. Before so they're lengthening the wave. They're lengthening their wave, but they're also adjusting the opportunity to get a flow going so they're going to do different turns and At different and, points in the wave. different points in the wave yeah. which is you have to have kind of a, a formula there or else you're going to be off and that's going to throw your whole ride off all right here we go Federico Moraes right there in the zone nice and calm assessing his situation okay don't paddle too early Yet to see a surfer miss a wave, which would be a tragedy. As we see now, Federico, his backhand equally as good, if not better than his forehand. He's got a real nice drawn out backhand whip. Always real precise in his placement. Throwing the tail there, like to see it going backwards. 
Smooth recovery. Wow, he is looking sharp right now. That was nice, definitely. Creating the spice, showing a little surprise for us, you know, the drift of the fins like that and being late, but still coming around the section with no worries and zapping the section. Oh, that was one of the best turns. Combo entry. Give this man some points. That was Ooh. awesome. Nice. Didn't look fatigued at all either, too. You know, like he's a, a very well-trained athlete and he felt it, you know, and I, I think he knows that the right was maybe a little left on the table slightly, but not totally. But that left was a, a solid number for him. He should feel very comfortable going into run number two. Puerto Rico is said to have a huge year surfing like this. He is a confirmed Olympic surfer coming up down the line. And think about yeah. how big that is for Portugal. Hey, get a win here at Surf Ranch. Take it over to Japan. You have the best year of your life, no doubt. Welcome back to Championship Tour Surfing, live from Lemoor. This is the Jeep Surf Ranch Pro, presented by Adobe. Chris Cote here with Pete Mel, and we have just been blown away by Frederico Moraes. Front side, back side, power, spray, speed, power, and flow. He did it all. He was rewarded, but watch out. There's a shark in the pool. His name is Felipe Toledo. And he is always a threat to do something unbelievable on this wave. And as you can see, he's fired up. He's feeling the energy. That's the entry we like to see. Coming straight off a floater into the tube. Comes out. Big power snap there. And you know what he wants at the end of this wave. If any surfer is going to bypass this secondary tube section, it's going to be Lee Bay. <laughs> wow. By the way, think it we got to count every single turn he's done on this wave because I think it was by far the most. And some of the best. <laughs> yep. I and saw that alley. happening a mile away. Okay, I think there was literally 13, 14 turns on that wave. Um, six before the barrel section, just to count that. Like, And they were all good turns. It was just uh, they got better and better and better. And he didn't look like he was rushed. He didn't look like he was late ever. The barrel came out of the turn, right into the barrel, got super deep, came out, and then did six more turns before the inside section. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Pretty With a huge alley-oop. Here's the uh, Shiseido ski cam. Pretty amazing that if any other surf in the draw One. rode a wave like this, we would be losing our minds. But it's Felipe Toledo. Three. We're used to this. Yeah. And that's saying Four. a lot. Four. And then another one. Five. Usually we're seeing one, you know, one to three. Oh, no. Sorry. Six. Seven. <laughs> and I, then I've he's lost drained. count. My abacus is broken. And uh, again, disappeared and then comes out and he just really does well with the rail work here. You know, there was the spontaneity and speed and crispness outside here. He starts to get the rail work driving through it. This coming turn. Dang. I mean, every time he did not waste one ounce of this wave. I mean, start to finish. Absolutely crushed. And different types of maneuvers. So cool. And uh, yeah, innovation progression moment right here. No problem. Easy landing all the way around, lands right on the face, and why not have a little roundhouse cutback to finish it off? To head there. Best wave of the day. I'm with you. And of course, the shout out to Adriana de Souza. That was incredible surfing. So Felipe Toledo is in the world title conversation because remember, when we get to the Rip Curl finals, their top five male and top five female surfers, one of those five surfers will win the title in the water. There's no title one while flying around. It, you're lit, you're winning in the lineup. Somebody's going to get chaired up the beach. Will it be Felipe Toledo? He's pretty good at lowers. He's pretty good here at the ranch. A win here. Get some room to grow. Toledo is looking like it. Let's go to Strider Wasilewski with the front row seat. Wow, what flow off the beginning of this wave. Goes vertical. Legs are tired. You know this is where the fatigue setting in. He's going to back up into the car. Quick snap right there. Reloads the gun, bangs it away again, looking solid. There we go, big snap. Oh. Looking for this inside corner to load up again. Here we go, grabs the rail. You guys are gonna have to take it away, I'm out of sight. <laughs> well, so is Felipe. He was in the tube, <laughs> goes to the backside, whip, and of course he makes it. We've got a new leader. Uh, way, we've got a way new in leader. The lead. Way out in the lead. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, you waited for a guy who's been putting in performances here at the ranch, and he did not disappoint, did he? He cut a different path on both the waves that he got. Scalpel, he just brought the, one hand he's got a scalpel, the other one he's got a machete, 
and he's chopping his way down the line, serpentine, smooth all the way, while still showing us frenetic energy from beginning to end. Yeah. How does he do it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, it, it definitely, he's a little bit spent. I mean, he have to be, because he was going so quick through transitions. He packed in more turns on this wave, too, the most we've seen, and yet still finishes with the blow tail reverse. I mean, here he took what, that was a little moment that he had a rest. That was the only time he rested the entire two waves. What's incredible too is, yeah, a lot of surfers could do that many turns down the line and just bam, 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 bam. Watch but this. But he makes it look good. Tail whip, just a little pop whip. That's a chop hop. It's okay. I, I'm a fan. It's all good, Bring especially it. when you get that thing up above those hips. Bring it. And again, you're talking about third gear. Yeah, it, it, he still has a lot more to bring us. <laughs> And you've seen, so you've seen the buildup for the day, you know, a, a tentative start for some of our surfers, maybe just kind of getting used to things. Now it's time to light things up. Need to see some urgency from Eli Hanneman. This kid has springs for legs. He could do the best airs of anyone in this field. They're brand new springs too, right? He's a youngster. I love his back arm, how he drives it forward, winds up his bottom turns. That's something distinct to him. Right, so this is kind of your uh, Ooh, spit on set him. the table. A couple turns out the back, a nice barrel. We don't always see this wave spit, but it's spit on him. Kind of cool. Well, energy boost. All right, now it's time to get busy, do meaningful maneuvers, big turns, switch things up. Hanneman, so far so good. Here's where he's oh! got to turn that, turn that inner score yes. off in his brain because right there he was probably <laughs> feeling good. I'm on, I'm on a six so far. He's hearing you too, Cote. Man, that was, uh, you, you saw the wind up, you saw the development coming down the line and, oh. It was, uh, it's a solid number. This is gonna put him there. It's gonna put him there. And then the nose just goes, and just gets sucked down the face. He's uh, one of the surfers that you watch that excites you the second he stands up because you have no idea what he's gonna do. He's capable of anything. Yeah, and very well rounded, right? I mean, he can even pull into the biggest of barrels on the North Shore. He's not scared. Look at this wave spit on him. Poof, right there. That was the first spit I've seen of the day. And then the end section where the mistake happens, I, I mean, I, it was so difficult because it just came out of nowhere. Right there, a uh, little tomahawk. Nose gets caught on the outside rail, goes down. Sometimes speed kills. It happened right there. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more action. More Felipe Toledo and your favorites coming right up. You're watching the Jeep Surf Ranch Pro presented by Adobe. You're watching the Jeep Surf Ranch Pro presented by Adobe. Stop number six of the World Surf League Championship Tour. It all began at Pipeline, and now we're here at stop six of the season after four back-to-back-to-back -back -back events that we had through Australia. Now it's time for a wild card named Eli Hanneman to get into his second run of the day. One of the best grommets in the world. Well, now he's an adult. Growing up quickly these days. Surfing on the main stage, Hanneman looking to better his 5 and 393 he had on his opening run just moments ago. Hard off the bottom, nice float over the hollow part of the wave. Deep off the bottom, big backside hack there. Nice draw there in the pocket again. I love how deep that he's committing way out in the flat. Some surfers try to just keep those bottom turns a bit shorter to keep up with the pace, but he's shown he's got plenty of time. Grabs the rail nice and early, burning off some speed. There's that classic backhand tube stall, and looks like he just burned off a little too much speed. Sometimes, Rosie, these superhero grommets that have big brands calling them when they're not even teenagers yet, that can come with pressure. I always felt like Eli's been handling that so incredibly well for what seems like a decade already. Yeah, he's grown into grown into his potential, but also taking everything in his stride. Got a level head on his shoulders. So good to see just a humble kid coming through the ranks and doing so well for himself. And like you said, that fundamental of that bottom turn, top turn connection, he does it so well. The bottom turn sets up everything in surfing. A lot of times we're seeing here at the surf ranch that bottom turn get cut short. So, um, so cool to see him ready. Um, committing to that bottom turn and the top turn combination. Let's see where he gets gold up here. You see a little bit of his head right there. Uh, just appears through the lips, so he goes down. But Eli, he's got to be proud of himself. 
The first surfer that qualified for the top 34 in the world that came from Maui, where Eli comes from, was Dusty Payne. And Dusty had that crazy new school approach, was in all the high performance movies. As we know, he, he dealt with a, a lot of serious injuries, but he never gave. He just took down huge names. And I almost felt like maybe <laughs> since uh, Morgan Siblick, <laughs> who's been his sparring partner for a while now, had instant success, it probably just gave him confidence going, wait, that's my sparring partner, one of my friends, using the same coach in Jay Bottle Thompson. And then they got to share a heat together. In the semifinals, Morgan Liam O'Brien, that was uh, the best wild card performance we've had this season. Yeah, just so great to watch him. And then, like, like you said, I, I've seen him surf um, at the U.S. Open. He's had a couple big results. So he's one of those guys, you know, if last year hadn't happened, would he have been on the CT coming into the 2021 season? So he's got to take a lot of confidence and momentum out of his last couple performances and apply that to the qualifying series, Challenger Series. Growing up at Burley Heads, Burley had a crazy event over 40 years ago, like the Stubbies back in the day, that introduced man -on man surfing for the first time in surfing history. So filled with legends. Super comfy on his forehand attack on a stretched out right like this. Feeling right at home. Slams on the brakes, quick adjustment to get a quick barrel out already, back to maneuvers. Some surfers have identified certain poles and flags where they know when it's going to get hollow. So sometimes they'll be referencing which flag they see when they stop going for turns and slow down for the pin. Liam's learning a lot on the flies. He's just hammering another big section. Now slowing it down. That's going to feel good all day long, whether it's at home in Burley or here at the Surf Ranch in the middle of California. He'll miss the finish. But seeing the improvement there, he had the 1-7, one, 1-4-3 one, on the opening run. So already making a nice recovery there. Yeah, good for Liam just to take that opportunity and turn around after a disappointing start on that right. And, you know, this wave does have a kind of Burley-esque feel to it with that barrel out the outside, then it kind of slows down. And um, growing up on a right-hand point break, this right's got to feel um, pretty comfortable for someone like Liam. And like you said, a lot of people know the, the different markings on the on the uh, flag poles. But Liam getting a wild card, card call up, I wonder how much attention he's kind of paid to those details. I think he's really um, a couple steps behind that kind of experience. You can get a lot of information in a short period of time. I was talking to Jabe, who's also a wild card. And it's like you can get all these informations about flags. And then you can almost forget to surf if you just getting your feet wet. Sometimes you just want to stay in the moment, maybe simplify the formula so you can do your best surfing. In my mind, some of the best athletes in the world are pro surfers. And I think people Surfer understand the, the lifestyle of surfing, right but to actually stay seven. on this tour and fight for world titles, to deal with Mother Nature and the ocean, to deal with the pressure of the surf ranch, you're always throwing surprises. It's never always the same. Depending on waves or what kind of pressure you're under, it's, it's amazing how the roads lead to world champions. And you become the undisputed best surfer in the world on the World Surf League Championship Tour. Yeah, I mean, one event rolls into the next. You have injuries. You've got to sort everything out on the fly. So, yeah, I totally agree with you. Well-rounded athletes, surfers have become so finely tuned. Liam O'Brien just kind of skating down the line quickly. I love how he's just going top to bottom. Nothing super crazy, but he's just covering some ground. Now he's got a big section to go more vertical. He'll... Kind of have to work hard to get back out in front. Saw the white water kind of slow him down, but he's recovered well. Nice sink with his rhythm in the pocket. He's anticipating that inside corner going inside out right before it goes hollow. He pokes the nose and goes down. He improved on the right with a 4-7. He will get the improvement on the left. But losing that end section pit, it's going to be tough to, to make the next round. Yeah, that's going to be a, a tough pull to swallow. And with this uh, this new format that we've gotten, we we'll me we'll mentioned this morning, I mean, these guys, you get one shot at it. We're going to see surfers go home after riding only four waves, and they know the reality of it. So that pressure builds. As you see, Liam, he didn't quite pace this wave correctly. And you could tell that he just kind of got hung up over there and never really regathered himself. 
always trying to get out in front of that open face. Kind of made up for it there, but no major maneuvers. There's no point in this way where you're like, wow, that was like a stand-up moment for me. Um, digs the nose. He goes down. You see that? He's not quite gathering himself over the string of that surfboard and, and completing that maneuver. We'll never forget when Mikey Wright qualified as a wild card with instant success at Snapper Rocks when he beat John John and Medina. The wild cards kept coming and he ended up qualifying for the tour. Uh, everyone's hanging out, watching the big screens, uh, watching the numbers follow through. So you can see the pressure that could enter your head like Kaip was talking about, Rosie, where everything can amount on top of you. All the pressure, these younger names trying to really count points at this stage. I mean, it's easy to hide oh, from the conversation of requalification of pipe and, and you know, Newcastle stop too, but now that's a big message. If you already have your throwaways, I mean, you're feeling the heat at this point of the year. Very vulnerable. You're vulnerable in your position on turn. It all comes down to this moment right here as that uh, wave approaches. Pedersen Crisanto is a superstar. Kind of like Hanneman when he was a young Grom, got big wild cards into Brazil, completely changed his program. When he thought his career wasn't going to happen, came back, qualified. He's so stocky and powerful. And he's got a very powerful air game as well. There's the tube ride for Pedersen. Hard off the bottom, clean re-entry there. How clean is that open wall? Talk about the stoke machine. He'd fly thousands of miles around the world to get an open face like this one. Jamming it hard again is Pedersen. Belting it, almost a little slide off the lip line. And then fits himself into the pit. Coming out with plenty of room for more. Crab rail, nose pick, reverse. He ends up losing it. But that's probably one of the cooler, explosive finishing maneuvers to go for on the right after you've ridden it for 45 seconds. Yeah, I mean, looking in that way from Pedersen, just so well put together. And I think for Pedersen, it really got started towards the end of the wave. I mean, he, he got the barrel sections. He kind of did a bit of outside work over here, but it was all just kind of playing catch up. And then he started with this barrel right here. It doesn't get super deep. He's on that foam ball a little bit. He comes out, but then starts throwing the hammers down, stays center of gravity over that board, tucks under that lip, just digging the way that he's putting this wave together. And I love the salute of uh, having Adriano's name on all of the Brazilians back as they surf this event as a salute to the world champ from Brazil. So cool. You see the power of the Brazilian storm and Pedersen knows what they've done for his career. They actually had the storm grab a hold of Pedersen and say, you are too good not to be on tour, not to be a pro surfer. You need to be in these Brazilian national events and they band together, got him into the place that he is today, and he is so grateful, and we are too, seeing him perform. Uh, Liam, look forward to seeing him in the future and seeing what he provides um, with his surfing talents. There's something like that you see in, in uh, big wave surfing, like uh, a Lori Towner, for example, mm -hmm. when he sees a 20-foot monster coming towards him. Surfer he doesn't water, seem like the guy where his blood level's seven. just spiking and his adrenaline's going through the roof and his eyes are popping out. He's so calm. He's actually smiling. He's calm. <laughs> and I think there's some translation to needing a score when, when you're under pressure and you just are so confident knowing that you can really control what can be seemingly insurmountable at times. Crisanto setting up the backhand. A lot of the big airs I've seen from him in his career have been on a lot of big ramps on his forehand. Has a solid power base approach. And doesn't mind going for it. I love the timing on that whip off the top. Kind of just had to place that follow up and now a bigger hack. This is where you get all the money for maneuvers. Pace slows down, you're able to line it up. Kelly worked with the engineer team and created a lot of the bottoms of surf spots that he loved around the world to create similar sections. Nice hollow pit for Pedersen and carves his way through the finish. Legs are burning. The 
WSL medical staff is incredible. You'll see guys like Terry Romine very busy just after two waves. It sounds silly, two waves, the best in the world, but the way they surf this wave, it's not like a normal human being. They're not taking breaks. They're pushing through every section as hard as they can. Yeah, I was actually watching at, at one of the events, Terry Roman was here, and he was actually massaging, you know, the quads and getting that lactic acid to kind of release after these surfers had had these waves because it builds up so quickly, that burn factor is there. Um, you've really got a quick turnaround here and a lot of um, emotional energy as well as physical output. So you've got to kind of find that release. And Pedersen just showing us how much it burns at the end of one of these 45 second waves. Great to see him just stay on his feet as well. Sometimes I think he could try to go for something really crazy. And he did a good job just to, to belt the finish. To try to put himself in a position to compete in the next round. Remember, six heats that they're competing in artificial waves. I mean, it happened in Allentown, Pennsylvania back in the 80s. But the wave was very weak. And it was quickly off tour. Now, with this technology, it actually replicates what you'd ride in the ocean with power. So the board that Leo Firavanti is riding now, he will ride in the ocean as well. There's the carve off the top for the Italian. First ever to be on the top 34 from Italy. Pulls into that chamber to try to get a beautiful vision. Double arm bar to stall. It's all about speed management. See how deep you want to get in the barrel. It's risky to go super deep because you can get caught in a traction. Viravanti now rifling off some beautiful snaps, but over rotating the blowtail. And he's going to lose a serious part of that wave. You can see this is run two, so he definitely had some room to move. Unfortunate fall there for Leo. Yeah, you can tell the disappointment from Leo as he just realizes that he doesn't get that end section on the wave, and he did so much work. This wave is over 45 seconds long, so you can just really rip in, and Leo did just that um, on this wave. I loved his little tube stance. He spent a lot of time in the shade on this wave. But there it goes. I mean, and that's how quickly things can change. You know, you're getting your groove, you're throwing the tail out, and all of a sudden that opportunity slips under, from underneath you. So a challenging one for Leo, but he's going to dig deep because he knows he has one more shot on the backhand. Really cool to see how that seating works. So qualifying for that final, it'll all work by seat. Who goes first is the, the lowest scoring athlete. So sometimes the last person standing is number one. And on the men's side, it's been all about the Medina story. Uh, for the women, it's been domination from Chris Samore. And the last uh, champ we had in 2019, Lakey Peterson, unfortunately still recovering from injury. Rolling in now, Leo Firavanti is probably just surfing for eights now, knowing he needs something big, big, powerful backhand snap. Flowing down the line, punches out that tail. He's got his stepdad, Stephen Bell, covering all the action for him in the friends and family zone. Moving quickly, another beautiful snap for Firavanti. Needs to be perfect towards the end here, pulls in nice and low. A finish would be crucial, comes out early, a little bit of wave left. And he'll just ditch the fins and just feel the legs burn. An important one for him to ride through. That was going to be his last wave to try to hope for a spot in the next round. Great job for Leo under pressure there. Yeah, great job from Leo. I love the way that Leo's one of those surfers. He just lets it all hang out. He wears his heart on his sleeve. This surfing right here knows, knows that he's going for that big score, that seven point range. So. Um, Wow, beautiful fin release there, tail release, and able to get around that section. We know that that white water, as soon as it clips your board, the game is over. So Leia negotiating that section really well, Joe. I love how he threw a lot of risk, blowing the board out the back. Had plenty of time to catch back up to the wave row. Yeah, and then just pulls under the hood like that. So that combo, just the... You know, that fin release to under the hood of that barrel was really crucial. And like you said, for a big finish on this wave, he needed to do something on this end section. He lands on his feet. It wasn't a clean exit from that barrel, though. 
That is how you do it, Strider Wazalewski. I, I can't believe he didn't get a wild card. I, I mean, what's going on there with that performance? Talking the whole way through the tube. I mean, that doesn't happen every day. What a good breakdown of the right. That Frederico Marais is starting to tear apart. Waz is breaking down all the different sections. Freddy looks like he wants a piece of that outside tube. It's a big man. Comes from a, a rugby family. Everyone in his family seems to play rugby. He chose surfing, but he's got a build for a lot of different types of sports. Nice, powerful hack there for Marias. A champion at Haleiwa. And runner-up at Sunset Beach. All the serious waves on the island of Oahu as he pulls in. Great positioning. He's deep there. Going for a nice little power hack. Should be a bonus section there for the front side wrap. Nice, clean. Surfing from Marias. Steady Freddy, always uh, delivering under pressure. 100%, and he is also repping Adriano D'Souza's number and his name on his back. The Portuguese sofa also paying his respects to Adriano D'Souza. Really cool, and I love that. You, you talk about you know, the events in Portugal as well, and for a lot of the Brazilians, I mean, it is their second home. They can speak the same language. Uh, there's a lot of Brazilian barbecue restaurants in Portugal. You know, Freddie going to Brazil, he feels right at home as well. You know, you can speak the language. A lot of Freddie's best friends on tour are from Brazil as well. How'd you like his uh, work out the back, Rosie, to start this thing? Yeah, I love the way that he ditched the fins there. It's kind of what we've come to expect from him, you know, just solid surfing throughout, just hunting that barrel. Um, just to note that the judges are really looking for that depth, that riding on the foam ball, the critical section of the criticalness of it. Love that turn into the barrel combo. That's where that wave kind of steepens up. He attacks that lip, comes out, lays on that rail. I love that last turn too, just that little bit of exclamation point on the end. Frederico Marias has uh, done a lot in a short period of time. An exciting rookie on tour was able to feature in a very exciting final at Jeffreys Bay in South Africa. He's able to get a 10 to his name and passed a, a lot of world champions. He seemed to have almost every world champion on his side of the draw. And the waves were flawless. It was actually raining 10s throughout that finals day. And that's kind of when Felipe started building his reputation. You know, when he's meeting up with guys like DeSouza and Medina and all the former world champs. And John John Florence, that was one of his big takedowns in that event. You can see how much confidence he had towards uh, the back end of the season as well. Yeah, you've got to run with that momentum for, for when you're a rookie on a tour. The fact that you made a huge final like that, that's a big feather in your cap. And um, that experience takes you a long way. Well, Federico Marias has already done well on the right, a 7.0. He did improve from his right earlier. So he's going to keep the 7 that we just saw. Now we'll see if he can improve on a 627. Currently number seven on the leaderboard. Out of all the surfing we've seen today. Just ahead of Connor Coffin. Connor ahead of Pat G there. Situation changing quickly as we see the backhand. Tail side for Marias. Learning so much from Tiago Pettis who paved the way for himself. And guys like Vasco Rivero. was incredibly dangerous as a wild card before he got on full time. Now Freddy took a little breather just to reset the rail, then hammers it. Now slamming on the brakes for the pit. Almost completely gone. And jams it shut. Solid power surfing. Always what you expect from Frederico Marias doing a great job to stay on his feet. And I I think that's a fair effort to try to improve on that 627. I was going to say the exact same thing. I think he's uh, up the ante a notch on that last effort on the left. Welcome back to the Jeep Surf Ranch Pro presented by Adobe Felipe Toledo, one of the fastest surfers in the world. The king of high performance. He's explosive. He's got variety. And he's had back-to-back -back runner up finishes here at the Surf Ranch. Already threw so many different maneuvers, floating it right into the pit. What a transition. Now just managing that speed, even completely gone on maybe the toughest barrel section on the right. Back out in front, right into a frontside jam off the lip, carves the next maneuver. 
Quick ditch of the fins. Down car, setting up the lift to hit. There's that little layback punch right in the pocket. Fits in one more turn. A little out of front of the inside K, but he's got plenty of room for the Ooh. big throw tail reverse. Almost rode away clean. Oftentimes he picks that nose right in the face and whips it around quickly. That one got away from him this time. But so cool, so dynamic. What a way to end off a wave. An 887 already on his right. So, um, yeah, he had room to move there. He could kind of just play with it and then see where he wanted to go. I'd love to have seen him complete that maneuver. It's amazing when you talk about this event, and Medina's dominated, obviously, with the wins. But when it comes to the right, when you look at the top five scores ever on the right at the Surf Ranch, Felipe Toledo has the top five highest scores in the previous two events. What do you like about the start here? I just love the flow from, from Felipe. And I think, like you said, that float into barrel transition, uh, that board he swapped out from his previous run, just uh, trying something new, the dark arts from Sharpa under his feet. Oh, man, his rail game is just so impeccable. Um, yeah, there's certain surfers at the surf ranch that just, it's, you know, it's like a fingerprint. They're just so natural at it, and they can just lock right into that special place and that special feeling. Love the speed of that nose pick reverse, unfortunately coming unstuck on that one. I love how he has so much variety as well. You'll see him do multiple alley-oops on a wave. He'll throw down a big nose pick reverse the next time. We talked about his five high scores on the surf ranch right, which he has all the records there. A 9-8 is his high mark. Connor was really, really fun to watch. And remember, we have more heats to watch. Uh, big heats from Gabriel Medina. We'll be surfing tomorrow with Seth Moniz, Jadson Andre, Jack Freestone, Ace Bucken, and also a wild card from Ventura, Jabe Swierkowski. So Toledo now thinking about what he might want to do on the left. He had the 7-4-7. Seven, which already has him out in front as the current leader. Two snaps already. We'll see him just pace himself now. He's been a champion at lowers, two-time champion at J-Bay. There's the backhand air reverse. Ton of risk in that transition. Ran into a beautiful fan of spray. Won an event at Margaret River this season over Jordy Smith in the final. So in a great position in the title race. Jamming another big, powerful hack. Pulls in with some room. Felipe Toledo going to finish. Backhand air reverse. Oh Stops it. Perfect. Stop it. That was incredible. We're not letting too many fans on the property at the moment, but you could hear in the ambient that there was a lot of, uh, you know, hooting for uh, Felipe there. So that's his peers. They're watching his performance and very impressed as Felipe. Man, he's just so unbelievable at this pace. You, you set his record on the right to getting in the excellent range. Here on the left, I mean, he's definitely making a strong case for an excellent range. Like you said, the risk ratio to do that maneuver on that section, but also clear the section. It wasn't like he got hung up. He cleared the section. It was a functional maneuver. So cool to see the amount of maneuvers, but they're all with quality. You know, it's like you're not counting turns anymore with the old criteria it used to do. The amount of explosive maneuvers that he has is unbelievable. Even if he seems like he's out of position for a barrel, he just proves that he has all the time. It's almost like he can slow things down in his mind. Well, shots fired too, Joe, because this is just the qualifying round. And I think Felipe, he's, he's keeping some in reserved in the tank. He's got more to give as we go through the competition. So that was an unbelievable ride, but I think he's got even more to give. Toledo threw out another incredible season and enjoying just backing the Brazilian storm as they've been quite a contingent.